Hello, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us today for Wild Sarasota's presentation on the hummingbirds of Florida. My name is Jacob Wilson. I'm an environmental education and outreach intern here with Sarasota County in the UF IFAS Extension Office. I have my undergraduate degree in mass communications. I am currently pursuing my master's degree in global sustainability. I'm a Florida native who is passionate about education, the outdoors, and sustainability. And welcome everyone. I'm Dr. Katherine Clements. I'm the Ecology and Natural Resources Educator here at University of Florida IFAS Extension in Sarasota County. I'm here year round to provide education to our community, both youth and adults on wildlife, education and any concerns you might have about wildlife, native and invasive species, the health benefits of nature, and also we lead in-person eco walks at many of our county parks and preserves. I have a background in environmental studies from State University of New York in Buffalo, where I'm from. And I also had a career as a physician for a couple decades before returning full circle to environmental education here at the Extension Office about five and a half years ago. So on the next slide, I'll share a little bit about the Extension Office for those of you that aren't familiar with it. There are extension offices in all 67 counties here in the state of Florida and also all throughout our country because they are associated with the land grant universities in each of our states. Here in Sarasota, our extension office is a partnership between Sarasota County, the University of Florida and the USDA. And basically our mission is to take the resources and research done at the university and share them with our local community to provide practical education and to help our residents, professionals, and decision makers build a better future here in Sarasota County. So we have programs in all these six core areas that you see on the screen here. I, of course, am under natural resources, but we have programs in agriculture, gardening, horticulture, sustainability, uh, nutrition, as well as our 4-H youth development program, which is for all youth ages 5 to 18. On the next slide, you'll see some of the program logos of uh, some of the main programs we offer to our community. And up there in the upper right-hand corner is the Florida Master Naturalist Program, which I'm a lead instructor for. And this is a fabulous program to take some courses in if you are really interested in Florida's ecosystems and the plants and animals that share our state with us because the Florida Master Naturalist Program is all about learning about Florida's environment. And next slide, I'm going to turn it over to Jacob, who has created this wonderful presentation, and he is going to share all sorts of information about hummingbirds with you today. Excellent. Thank you, Catherine, and thank you all for joining us. I want to begin this presentation by addressing a very great holiday, National Hummingbird Day. Here in 2022, we celebrated on September 3rd, but National Hummingbird Day is celebrated on the first Saturday in September annually. National Hummingbird Day exists to celebrate and recognize the importance of hummingbirds as they help pollinate our flowers. And a fun fact, one of the earliest descriptions of hummingbird dates all the way back to 1557, published by French explorer Jean de la Rey. Check to see if your community is hosting activities such as educational programs or field trips, even certain gardening tips to help keep this a thriving population of hummingbirds. So today we're going to dive into hummingbirds. And before we get started on our Florida centric hummingbirds, I'd like to state that there are 338 known species of hummingbirds that only live here in the Americas. They are known for their unique iridescent feathers. And this iridescence is caused by what's called melanosomes. These are flat pancake-like cellular structures that contain air bubbles. These air bubbles reflect light, leading to their beautifully bright coloration. As you can see here in our ruby-throated hummingbird, right under the chin. All of these hummingbirds only reside in North, South, and Central America. There are only 16 here in the United States, and there are only three species of hummingbirds that we find here in Florida, of which include the ruby-throated hummingbird, the most common, the black-chinned hummingbird, and the rufous hummingbird. The ruby-throated hunting, the ruby-throated hummingbird is a small hummingbird with thin, slightly downward curved bill and short wings. Adult males are colored with an emerald to green golden back, as well as the top of the head. They have a grayish white underbelly. Males have their signature red plumage on the throat that is caused by air bubbles. 
as we can see right here, those melanosomes. The female ruby-throated hummingbirds do not have the red throat. It is typically white. Both juveniles and females have white tips on their black feathers. Males lose these white tips with age. Medium to long distance migrant, they spend their winters in Central America, but birds from farther north will spend their winters here in Florida on the Gulf Coast or, su or Southern Atlantic coast. The ruby-throated hummingbird is found throughout Eastern North America and in the Canadian prairies. Their habitats include woodlands, meadows, orchards, river borders, and even backyard gardens. Their nests are typically built directly on top of a branch, and this hummingbird's nest is only the size of a thimble. Often, it's constructed of thistle or dandelion, and it's often held together just using strands of spider silk. Their nests are usually found from 10 to 40 feet above ground, and they're so small that they've even been found to be in loops of chain wire or extension cords. Here we have some comparison photos of the ruby-throated hummingbirds. On the left, we have the female, and on the right, we have the male. Immediately, you can see the difference between these iridescent colors here on the throat. Both have their emerald green back, but the female has a much duller coloration on the bottom of white to a brownish gray. And the male, of course, you have deeper, more vivid colors. Next, we have the black-chinned hummingbird. This is a Western hummingbird that can occasionally be seen in Florida during the winter. The black chin hummingbird is green on its back, but does not have any vivid colors on its throat, except for a very small strip of purple against its black chin that can only be seen in direct light. Males have a dull gray to white underbelly, but a velvet black throat, or as they call it, their black chin. Females and juveniles are a dull, almost metallic green on top with a whitish throat and underbelly. Tips of the female's tail feathers are white as well. So the black chin hummingbird is very widespread throughout the Western United States, commonly found in Western states. This hummingbird can be found in habitats from deserts to high mountain forests. Most black chin hummingbirds winter in Western Mexico, but today there are many more black chin hummingbirds wintering in the Gulf Coast of Florida than once believed. Their nests are mostly found from six to 12 feet above ground, and when their nest is built, it's a very deep and compact cup that stretches over time. It's made of plant down, cocoon fibers, and like the ruby-throated hummingbird, they use spider silk to mend it together. More comparison photos, identifying the differences between the female on the left and the male on the right. This is a great photo of the male hummingbird, male black chin hummingbird. As you can see in direct light, this purple plumage this iridescent color right under its black chin. Again, this is only seen in direct light. Most commonly, you will just see their black chin. And on the left here, we have the female black chin hummingbird, which almost looks like the female ruby-throated hummingbird. A key identifier is it doesn't have that shiny emerald iridescent color on the back. Its plumage is much more dull. Still a beautiful bird. You can see those white tips on the ends of its feathers as well. The Rufus Hummingbird, known as one of North America's most aggressive hummingbirds, this hummer will not shy from a fight if it means defending its flower or feeder. It's known to make life quite difficult for the backyard hummingbirds, but no worries if it's on your migration route, it should pass through your backyard quite quickly. Males are bright orange on their back and their underbelly fades to a white near the throat. The throat is an iridescent red orange. Females have greenish feathers on top with rust colored flanks and patches on their green tail there's often a spot of orange on the throat. These birds have an excellent memory for location. They're known to search where a feeder was located from previous years during their extremely long migration. A very long distant migrant, the Rufus hummingbird breeds farther north than any other hummingbird, traveling around 4,000 miles from their breeding grounds in Alaska and Northwest Canada to winter all the way in Mexico. Find them in California during the spring, the Pacific Northwest and Alaska during the summer, and the Rocky Mountains in the fall. Most individuals of this species will migrate towards Mexico for the winter, but lucky for us, some flock to the Gulf Coast of Mexico. The migration pattern is a clockwise circuit of Western North America, and their nests are about 30 feet in the air, and they're hidden in drooping branches. Their nesting process begins only three days upon arrival to their breeding grounds. And here you can spot quite the difference between the female on the left and the male on the right. 
the female, much more dull coloration. It doesn't have that bright red orange iridescent throat or the bright orange colors on its back and belly. It's more of a beige to white to a little bit of green on back with the rustic coloration. Residents or migrants. Here in Florida, we are home to the rufous, black-chinned, and ruby-throated hummingbirds. But the question is whether these hummingbirds are year-long residents or just snowbirds. Some rufous hummingbirds travel from the northwestern territories of Alaska and Canada just to winter all the way here in Florida. The black-chinned hummingbird migrates from the western United States to become here on the Gulf Coast of Florida as well. But our ruby-throated hummingbird may stay here year-round in Florida, while the rest of them will winter in Central America. We've covered the three hummingbirds that you can find here in Florida, but I wanted to make sure that I address some very unique and special hummingbirds that can be found within Central and South America. The bee hummingbird, also known as the world's smallest bird. This is only found in Cuba and it only measures two and a quarter inches long and weighs less than two grams. That's half the weight of our more common hummingbirds such as the ruby-throated hummingbird. Their nest is the size of a quarter and their eggs are the size of a coffee bean. The males have an iridescent red head and turquoise upper parts. The female is turquoise above, but no brilliant colors on the head. Look how tiny this is in comparison to the hand. A couple more pictures of the bee hummingbird, of course, only taken in Cuba. For comparison, we have the giant hummingbird. This is the world's largest hummingbird, about the size of the morning dove, this is about eight inches in length and 20 grams in weight. Found along the Western South Americas in mostly open and dry habitats, they also frequent gardens and Andean scrub habitat. Their plumage is not as vivid in color as other hummingbirds, but what they lack in coloration, they make up for in size. The giant hummingbird is greenish above with a brownish beige underbelly with rusty tones and spotting. Next, we have the sword-billed hummingbird. This bird is absolutely spectacular. And in relation to its body size, the sword-billed hummingbird has the longest bill of any bird in the world. The species of hummingbird has co-evolved with different species of long tubular shaped flowers that are only found in the temperate forests of the Andes Mountains. Found at the elevation of 2,500 meters to 3,500 meters from Venezuela to Bolivia, they have a shiny green plumage all over their body with a bronze head. As you can clearly see here, this bill is nearly the size of their body, if not longer. A few more pictures of the sword-billed hummingbird. You may have seen this in your backyard and maybe you thought that it was a hummingbird, but what you've seen is a clear wing moth. With a heavy body and long front wings, the hummingbird moth is still smaller than the bee hummingbird. But oftentimes, when people have seen this insect, they question whether they've seen a hummingbird. This may be due to their similar feeding patterns, which involve dipping into flowers for nectar, or it may be the flared tail on the male clear wing moth that is very similar to that of the hummingbird. That and their broad wingspan, it's clear to see why somebody would assume they're not looking at a moth. If you would like to attract some hummingbirds to your garden, here's a list of some Florida-friendly plants that may just lead them there. Firebush, coral honeysuckle, coral bean, tropical sage, crossvine, cardamom flower, and the necklace pod. Please, after this, feel free to check out this UF IFAS article for more hummingbird plants and garden solutions. And here are some photos of those Florida-friendly plants that attract hummingbirds. On the left, we have the cardinal flower, Second, we have the firebush. Next, we have the cross vine. And all the way on the right, we have our tropical sage. All beautiful flowers with that red coloration, sure to attract hummingbirds if you happen to be on their migration patterns or if you're in a common area where they are frequently. Hummingbird feeders. Hummingbirds burn a lot of calories, so a feeder is a good way to make sure they get the nectar, the nutrition they need. Hummingbirds make a beautiful addition to your backyard garden. And although their best food sources are nectar producing plants, a hummingbird feeder can prov help provide some extra food to their diet. 
Hummingbirds are attracted to red flowers, so keep an eye out for a red plastic feeder when shopping. And only two ingredients are needed, just sugar and water, no need for any extra dyes. It's important to make sure that hummingbirds have a thriving population, so making sure you plant those Florida-friendly plants, utilizing these feeders, keeping them fed, will help assist them have a thriving population here in the United States. And again, we have another UF IFAS article all about hummingbird feeders. If you'd like to check it out for more information, links are right there below. And here are some sources that I was able to use to make this presentation that you can use to help identify other hummingbirds on your travels here in the United States, South America, or Central America. All About Birds is an excellent link which provides great overview information on how to identify migration patterns, behavior, habitat, feeding, anything you need to see. IFAS has provided some great articles on gardening solutions as well. Thank you to everybody who joined. I hope you were able to learn some th new things about our Florida hummingbirds and also those extremely unique hummingbirds found around the world. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you for joining us.